welcome to Challenge the Road. And yes, I have sold the Taycan. My children are very, very unhappy with me. So the story goes, we sold the Range Rover and got a van and at the same time sold the Rolls Royce. And then they thought I was crazy. But one of them enjoyed the van and one of them didn't. We then kept the van because we went to the Taycan because I was called out a little bit on YouTube. They said, Richard, you don't know enough about electric cars. You don't know what you're talking about. Which was quite interesting because I've done a little list here of how many hybrids and that I've had. So I've had the Golf GTE. I've had the 530e BMW. We've actually got two of them. We've got one still in the company now. I had the Q4. I've had two Q5 hybrids. Now the Taycan, the P400e, and I had the P400 mild hybrid. So actually I've had every type of electric, electrification of a car you can have. So I would have thought I'm in quite a good position to understand the market a little bit. Now, they are not happy because the Taycan is really good. It's a really, really good car. And when I first got it, I said, they said, oh, don't want an electric car, they catch fire. I said, where did you see that? I said, on TikTok. I'm like, mm, okay. Um, we hope it doesn't catch fire today because obviously I'm driving you back from the school. But in the end, they love the Taycan and they're not happy. Um, and it's causing me a big problem because I don't know what to get next. That's gonna be a future video because I haven't actually bought a car. I am still, well, say still, I am in a Ford Focus from 2002, an RS Focus, um, and they think it's like being driven around in a tin can. So that is not going well at the moment. I have the competition Aston Martin I can use, which I have been, which has been really good as well, but it's only two seats. So at the moment, I don't have another car. I'm in the tin can Focus RS. Um, I quite like it, but they're complaining because there's no radio, so I can't find the code for it. Now, let's just go back to the Taycan because a lot of the comments were, I've done a lot of videos on Taycan and I really enjoy it to drive, really enjoy it. I think that the 4S Cross Turismo is the best one out there. Now, I obviously struggled a bit with the charging because the solar, moving house, the pod point and everything. Now, I thought I'd just carry on with the, I know everyone liked the McDonald's ones and all that. Um, obviously I'm a bit heavier than I was. Um, and I thought, shall I carry on? And I got an offer on the car because VBS, I spoke to them and they left it for sale. And they said, Richard, we've got somebody who wants to see it. Now I just put in the three pin charger and actually I'd had no problems for about a week. And I thought, hmm, if I'd had the pod point, I probably would have been fine. But my test wasn't about that. It wasn't about the people in the big houses with the chargers and it was more about the future because it seems a very limited person can have, or a limited number of persons, can have an electric car because you do need to be able to charge at home. It's too expensive out there in the real world around here. Um, I know that some of the charging prices people said were cheaper somewhere else or up north or whatever, but at the end of the day, it seems like a lot of money, the charging. And I proved that. Um, and yeah, you know, I bought a lot of cake. I've seen a lot of garden centers. But since then, I feel like because I'm in a petrol car again, like this was just like a mirage or something. Like it didn't really happen, all this electric stuff, because I'm not missing charging the car. I'm not missing trying to find somewhere to charge the car, going out. I actually drove out quite a long way, uh, filled up with fuel at services, and I thought, what the hell was I doing? Was I really doing this? And it made me feel like, well, I think all it is is it's just too early. And I said from the start that at the moment, I feel hybrid is best, although a diesel or petrol car is still fantastic. Um, and I'm not sure the saving on the hybrid is huge if you're doing distances. If you're doing short distances, I think the hybrid works really well. 
Um, and I've been through probably about 25 different cars trying to find a hybrid or a diesel or a petrol and, a, and it, I'm finding it really difficult. Normally I can just go out and buy the car and go, right, that's what I wanted, but I'm finding it really difficult. And I think these next videos, when I show you sort of how many cars I've been looking at, it, it's crazy. And even this morning I thought, Richard, you've got to get, you've got to get a car. What, what are you going to do? And I don't know which way to turn. Um, and I'll give you like a little example. I thought, right, I really want the X5 or the E45. So it's got like 40 miles, 35 miles of range. I thought that is perfect for me. It's working well just off the three pin charger. And then I realized that BMW only do a six year warranty with the battery and the ones I'm looking at are four years old. So I thought, mm. and you know what I do, I'm trying to buy cars at the best price to, to have the least depreciation. We go to that because I sold the Taycan for 60 and I purchased it for 66. Now I know a lot of people were saying, Richard, you've lost a fortune, you know, uh, there's other YouTubers out there who've lost a hundred thousand pounds, da 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 da, but it was six thousand pounds. Now I'm going to do another video on actually how much I lost because there's a bit of tax relief here. It is an electric car, that's why we were driven that way. Um, and Rob, who's you know been on before with the finance calls, I've asked him to work it out. I said, Rob, you know, tell me how much did it cost this car? Because everyone was going, oh, Richard, you're going to lose a fortune. These take hands are going to drop you, you know. And actually, I don't think it was too bad. And I'd done 7,000 miles. So that that's for another video. Um, and that's why I'd done it. I just thought, well, let's test it out. And I'm one of the best testers. You know, I, I know a lot about suspension, ride cars, how they are. I think that's all good on the Taycan. The only problem I had was the braking. Sometimes I almost went up the back of people. It has a way of some funny regeneration. But otherwise, it's a very good car. It's a very good looking car as well. And yeah, and it's put me in a, a big dilemma now of what I do. Everyone was, you know, <laughs> really happy with the McDonald's videos and the fun of going out and all that. Um, for me, it was quite stressful because... You know, sometimes I was thinking, crikey, I'm running low. A couple of times I did run low. And then when I got the home charger, I thought, well, what videos am I going to do? Because I've got the charge there. And it was fine. It was absolutely fine. So, yeah, the Taycan's gone. Um, it's sold. I'm looking forward to the next car because I really, really don't know where to go. Um, I've proved that the public charging network is flaky, expensive, and it will get there. But will it get there in time? That's my worry. The other reason with the Taycan was there's a new one out with more miles. And is that going to happen more regularly? Are we going to see that maybe in two years' time there's a Taycan with 500 miles faster charging? And then all these cars drop. Like I said in the first place, you know, my business is mobile phones. It feels like it's that way. And I said that from the beginning. And I, and I said we're not there um, I tried it again. You need to be in a real scenario where you've got home charging, short drives, and you're happy in that. And I'm sure you would save quite a lot of money. And I think that if you're buying a secondhand electric, and don't think I didn't look at that, I was thinking, could I buy a cheap electric car again? You know, because this is like still £60,000. I, I do believe, you know, £20,000 will be getting you a very, very good EV, really good EV, maybe less. And then, I have to think, well, what's the difference between that EV and, and a more expensive Porsche? Probably not a lot in real terms. Um, I haven't driven that many other EVs to know, um, but I am going to, and I, and I still want to continue with that. I just feel like 500 miles, half an hour charge is where I see it. Um, and if the public network can become you know, more cost effective. I don't think it will. I, th I think it's going to go up. I think it's going to be a pound a kilowatt, which is really high. So even though if you are doing a lot of journeys, you're sort of, you know, saving at home, but then it's costing you a lot when you're out. I feel much more relaxed as a person in a petrol car. I must say that. And it does feel like, what was I doing? Why was I doing that? I don't. And yeah, so it's, so it's gone. We need to move on. Um, 
I'm looking forward to the next car and I hope you are. Um, I hope you're following the Porsche journey as well, 997, really enjoying with that as well. The competition, we're gonna ramp up. Car events are, are here soon. Hopefully do some videos this week on Heaver, on Buell. We have got our cars and coffee this Friday at Buell Water. We have a few more spaces there. If you've got a car, you wanna come along, you wanna hang out with us, have a chat with us. Um, we're gonna show a few digital products from Active Digital, but also it's just nice to catch up, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy your week ahead and please like, share, subscribe. I'm sorry the Taycan's gone if you really like that car, but Maybe I'll get in one again, but also it's going to be a very, very interesting time on what I choose next. See you again soon.